So it has been almost two years since Nvidia released their Pascal architecture on their GTX 1080 and 1070 graphics card. So I thought that many of you guys that own those graphics cards might be thinking that you want some kind of performance upgrade but don't really feel like buying the next step up in the same architecture of graphics card. Not especially with the current prices of graphics card. So I thought now might be a pretty good time to make an overclocking guide for Pascal graphics card. So stick around and I'll teach you all how to do it. So if you want to know how to overclock your Pascal graphics card, you have to know how GPU Boost works because it directly affects the clock speed of your graphics card and it also is what controls the voltage and power limits and temperature limits of your graphics card. So we have to go all the way back to when GPU Boost was first launched on the GTX 600 series with the GTX 680. On the first generation GPU Boost, basically all it does, it has, it has a power limit and all it does, it maximizes the GPU Boost clock speed uh, as long as it doesn't hit the power limit. So this is all fine and great because it gives you a base clock speed that the GPU will hit uh, guaranteed if it hits the power limit, but it will keep the maximum clock speed as long as it doesn't hit the power limit. So it's basically more of a GPU performance maximizer before it hits a power limit. Because previously on previous graphics cards, the GPU just has a set single clock speed that it'll hit no matter what, even though if the program isn't using as much power as some other programs for example. So it allows Nvidia and board partners to ship the graphics cards with higher uh, rated boost speeds. But then on the GTX Titan and also GTX 700 series, Nvidia introduced GPU Boost 2.0. Now this is a little bit different in that GPU Boost 2.0 now also takes into account the temperature of your graphics card. So what it does is that it has a set temperature limit that you can set manually, but it'll usually be set on default at 82 degrees Celsius. So if your, G your GPU doesn't hit 82 degrees Celsius, it'll still keep boosting just the way it did on GPU Boost 1.0. But if it hits 82 degrees, it'll start reducing clocks. And if it still uh, increases in temperature without signs of stopping, it'll keep reducing clock speeds up to the base clock. And same thing if it hits the power limit. So it's still fine because it still lets the GPU keep a constant maximum turbo boost clock speed as long as it doesn't hit any of those power or temperature limits. But then when Nvidia launched the GTX 900 series with a maximal architecture, uh, they changed a little bit with the GPU Boost 2.0. And I would just call it GPU Boost 2.1 because it's a little bit different, but they still call it 2.0. So what they've done is that now instead of just reducing the clock speed only when you hit the limit, it starts reducing clock speed earlier in the temperature range because it starts reducing clock speeds at around 50 degrees Celsius by 13 megahertz inc increments uh, as long as it keeps increasing in temperature. So if you go from 50 to like 75 degrees uh, Celsius, you'll see that your clock speed has quite a huge decrease compared to uh, when it was running at 50 degrees Celsius because it'll keep reducing the clock speeds. Now this isn't very good because it makes it kind of hard to find your maximum overclock as if you find your maximum overclock while stress testing, when you start a game or a stress testing software while the GPU is cold, it'll boost to a clock speed at 50 degrees Celsius that's higher than for example when you're stress testing when it's already hot. So your GPU might hit a clock speed that's too high for it to handle and it'll crash. So this is already a little bit of a problem. But at least with GPU Boost 2.1 on GTX 900 series, you still get your own manual voltage control with an offset of like how many ever, how many ever millivolts that you want to apply uh, that's dependent of what you want. So it's still up to you how many voltage, how much voltage that you want to add. And usually you still get like at least 87 millivolts or at least 30 something millivolts that you can add to your graphics card. And then Nvidia launched the GTX 10 series and GPU Boost 3.0 with it. Now this changed uh, some things a little bit in that it changed the voltage limit instead of an offset that's actually increasing the voltage in millivolts to a percentage. Now this is kind of weird because what it what that slider actually does is that it doesn't actually increase the voltage anymore. So it doesn't endanger your graphics card like on previous versions of GPU Boost where you can increase your voltage, like actually increase it. Because with the percentage offset on GPU Boost 3.0, what you're doing is basically just moving the voltage to temperature uh, curve 
a little bit to the left so you can get access to Nvidia's preset voltage earlier in the temperature range. So you don't actually increase the voltage at all. You're just getting the same amount of voltage that you're, you'll otherwise be getting anyways, but earlier in the temperature range and it'll keep the voltage higher, uh, you know, as it gets hotter, but it's still under Nvidia's set voltage limits. So it doesn't make it dangerous to use. So personally, I'll, personally, I would just set that to maximum all the time. Uh, the other problem is that with GPU with 3.0, you still also get that clock speed reducing function algorithm that as the temperature increases, again starting from 50 degrees Celsius, it'll start dropping clocks by 13 megahertz increments, just like GPU Boost 2.0. So you again have to take that into account as you overclock your graphics card. But yeah, GPU with 3.0 really to me doesn't seem like a GPU performance increaser like Nvidia is touting because they have graphs where they show that GPU with 3.0 maximizes the clock speed at a certain voltage and power limits but I don't understand why you have to reduce it as it gets hotter because you you can technically just run it at maximum speed the same speed as it was cold when it gets hot anyways because as long as you feed the same amount of voltage usually it'll be stable anyways so it's more to me it seems like GPU boost 3.0 and 2.0 2.1 actually it's more of just a GPU protection thing more of a GPU performance crappy fire instead of a performance booster because all it does is take away the performance that you should be having at higher temperatures. It doesn't give you any extra performance at all. So for the first time now, if you water cool your graphics card, you will immediately see some gains in performance even without overclocking as if it's cooler, it'll automatically get the higher turbo boost bins as if it is colder, it'll automatically get the higher turbo boost bins and get higher clock speed even without overclocking. But it's not boosting the clock speed, it's just when it's cold, it's running at what it's supposed to be. But when it gets hot, it gets reduced. So all water cooling does to graphics card is basically nullifies what GPU boost is doing instead of GPU boost getting you free performance. So yeah. Now that you know how GPU Boost overclocks your graphics card or basically underclocks your graphics card instead of overclock, uh, you have to take into account when you're overclocking. So when you start overclocking, what I would do is that if you want to get the maximum performance, you should set your fan speed uh, curve to a more aggressive fan curve or just set it to maximum speed or whatever speed that you're comfortable at because the more fan speed that you get, the colder your graphics card is and the colder it is, the more performance you'll get as GPU boost will interfere less as it is colder. So you should always maximize the fan speed as much as you can. And you should also maximize the power limit, temperature limit, and the voltage limit because that will give you more headroom to increase the clock speeds. And after you've done that, you can see that even without changing the clock speed offset compared to a standard uh, stock settings graphics card like on this GTX 1070 that I'm testing at stock settings vs increasing the fan power limit and voltage limit and temperature limits you can see that you already see an increase in performance without any touching of the core clock or memory offsets. Now once you've done that you can also start increasing your core clock speeds now. You should increase it in about 10 megahertz increments and you should decrease it by 10 megahertz once it crashes so you should do it while running a stress test like running Unigen Valley beside MSI Afterburner or whatever software you're using to overclock and gradually increasing the clock speeds. Once you've found your maximum core clock speeds what you'll have to do is start to increase your memory clock speeds and I would recommend just increasing it in 50 megahertz or 25 megahertz increments because memory doesn't have that big of an impact as core clock speed does. So once you've found both of those maximum clock speeds uh, and it's stable for like at least like an hour on the stress test that you're using, you should try to open your favorite games. Now if it crashes immediately when you start the game, then you'll know that this is because GPU boost increases the clock speed to a clock speed that's too high for the GPU to handle when it's cold. Because remember, when it's cold, it'll boost higher than when it is hotter. So what you'll have to do is probably reduce, reduce your GPU core clock offset by 20 MHz or so, so that it doesn't boost too high when it's cold. 
And this is what's annoying about GPU boost because if you reduce the offset, it'll automatically automatically also reduce the offset of the GPU core clock speed when it's hot. So you don't get the maximum performance of your graphics card. You will never get it with GPU Boost 3.0 because of that. But yeah, once you found that your settings are stable, then you can pretty much try to game it for a few hours. And if it's stable, then it's completely stable. And that's it. Congratulations. You've overclocked your graphics card to the maximum. And like I said, if you want to get maximum performance, be sure to try and keep the fan speed at a higher fan speed than stock speeds because lower temperatures equals better performance. And hotter temperature equals to reduce clock speeds because of GPU boost, which, you know, honestly, it should really be called GPU performance crappy fire because it doesn't boost anything. All it does is reduce clock speeds gradually. Uh, and yeah. That's pretty much it for overclocking Pascal based GTX 10 series graphics card. Uh, so thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed the video and if you do please leave a like and please click subscribe to see more of my future videos. Thanks for watching.